Hello and welcome to our live broadcast. I'm Susan Saravo with Comerica's marketing team and I am joined by our chief economist, Robert Dye. Robert, welcome. Thank you, Susan. Nice to be back with you. Great to see you again. All right, let's start with the jobs today. We had a jobs report saying we had more than 550,000 new jobs created. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, another very strong number, but not quite as, as high as expectations. Uh, expectations were up about 650 to 700,000. That would be consistent with a strong reuptake of employment as this economy reflates. We weren't quite at that level, but still a very strong number. And the unemployment rate got pulled down to 5.8%. So I'll, I'll still, still take this as a win and consistent with this whole reflating story. Uh, we've got lots of different forces going on in the labor market right now. And the broad basket of labor data, though, is, is going in a good direction. So I think we can feel good about this number. Okay, I'm going to ask you a little bit more about that. But first, I want to mention that we are taking questions today. So if any of you who are watching, if you have any questions for Robert, go ahead and type them in the comments section and I'll take a look at those. Robert can't answer uh, all questions, but certainly those in his wheelhouse will take a look at. Okay, so more about the job situation though. Um, are we having an issue where there are just a lot of jobs out there open and there are not a lot of candidates there to fill them? Well, I think we actually have a pretty good matchup actually between the JOLTS data, which, which tracks job openings. Now that's lagged a couple months. So there's about eight or 9 million job openings out there. And there's about that many unemployed workers out there. One of the issues though, is we're seeing about half of states right now are starting to wind down or announce that they're going to begin winding down the Enhanced Unemployment Benefits Program. And, and I do expect that to motivate more workers back into their jobs. So what I'm expecting to see is a, is a ongoing steady decline in, in claims for unemployment insurance and an ongoing steady decline in the unemployment rate as workers now come out of their, their COVID situation into what we're all trying to come to terms with. And that's the, the post, hopefully post COVID environment here. Lots of questions, lots of uncertainty, but we're going in the right direction. And when, what's the timing on that? I've heard um, around September that we'll probably see a lot of that happening. I, I think so. I think that's a good demarcation Labor Day because we'll see schools reopening, childcare facilities reopening. Parents with young children are still in very much uncertain times right now. But I think we'll, we'll all feel a lot more normal, hopefully next fall, but we still have to recognize that the, the risk factor of a potential increase in coronavirus amongst the unvaccinated next fall. So that's, that's you know, that risk factor is still hanging out there. Okay, Robert. Well, let's talk about manufacturing now. Tell us more about the numbers and where do we stand with manufacturing? Well, we got two good reports from the Institute of Supply Management, their manufacturing index, the ISM manufacturing index, and, and their services index, both increased uh, for May and both are above 60. And the services index in particular, that set a new record. So these are indexes that, that capture production and new orders and employment and prices and a whole bunch of factors. And they're very, very strong right now. Again, consistent with the idea of a reflating, demand-driven economy. And at the same time, lots of constraints on the supply side. Commodity prices going up on both the manufacturing and the services report. Uh, uh, commodities and scarce supply. Inventories being very, very tight. So this is a picture that we've been talking about for a while. And all the data is, is really corroborating this right now. And Robert, where are we seeing the uh, most significant shortages in supplies? Well, uh, it, it's been very noticeable in the housing market with lumber being uh, uh, up through the roof, uh, to, to make a pun there, uh, uh, very strong prices. And, and autos, uh, computer chips, automakers are not able to keep up with demand. Demand is very strong, but production is limited. And across a wide variety of industries, again, this, this is a, a supply chain constrained economy. Now, the good news is that this will eventually work its way out of, out of the system. And, and we get that through price signals. And that's the bad news is we are seeing inflation numbers heat up as well. But 
Uh, I do expect the supply chain constraints to really be largely worked out of the system, hopefully by the end of this year. Now, Robert, you mentioned the auto industry. I know we had some um, some numbers a little bit lower, and um, I was wondering what, what's driving that because we know demand is there. So why haven't people bought as many cars? Well, uh, yes, yeah, so auto sales for May came down to a 17 million unit rate, and, and that is an inventory problem. Dealers across the board are saying they don't have the cars to sell, and, and so that's, uh, unfortunately, they're just not able to match up with that strong demand out there. Uh, the good news there is, again, I think the production, production will be able to come back up. And that demand isn't going to go away. I mean, people are going to be buying cars. They're going to be feeling better about the economy. They're going to be getting back to work. So I'm, I'm expecting a pretty good fall and in, in, in into the winter for, for both new and used car sales this year. Okay. And I imagine a lot of people put that off during the whole pandemic with the uncertainty of what was happening. But now people would be probably feeling a lot more confident. Exactly. Uncertainty has been a major factor plaguing this economy and, and the global economy over the last year. And that is that is declining, dissipating markedly here. And I think we'll continue to do so as, as we turn the corner into the fall. OK, well, thanks to everybody who's watching us now. And I also wanted to reiterate that Robert is taking some questions. So if anyone has any questions, just go ahead and put them in the comment section. I'll take a look at that. All right, now we're gonna move on to housing prices. Housing prices in March, 13% higher year over year. That sounds like a lot, Robert. When was the last time you saw a number like that? Well, these are certainly eye-catching numbers that, that take us back to 2006 and to 2007. And we all know how that ended up, but that was a very, very different market. That was a, a demand-driven market where, where uh, financing was so easy to come by, people buying multiple houses. This is very much a supply constrained market. The, the, the supply simply isn't there, especially on the new houses. When we talked about lumber and appliances and all that, it's very hard to build a house these days. You have to wait a long time. And so in a supply constrained market, uh, we're going to see those price increases, but I don't think we're going to be in for a, a, a huge deflation that we saw last time. And certainly the financial services industry is not caught up in housing mania like it was back in 2006 and 2007. So very strong price increases. It's an affordability problem, especially for first time buyers, but it is also on the plus side generating a lot of wealth for people who already own their home. They're their equity in their house is, is increasing very rapidly right now, and that's good for the economy in the long term. Okay, so when people say, oh, are we in another housing bubble? Um, that's not the case, say you, right? That's right. This is a very, very different situation. And again, it's self-correcting because I think those supply chain constraints will eventually go away. We'll be able to see, we'll see the, the, the building rates, the housing starts come back up. And people looking, especially for new homes, will be able to find that to find that supply out there, and that'll start to level out prices. Okay, that makes sense. All right, Robert, anything that you wanted to talk about on this Friday? Well, it is forecast Friday for me. That means we're working on our June U.S. Uh, monthly update right now. We will be publishing that early next week, so stay tuned. Okay, I don't know if you could hear me, Robert, but I was just saying thank you very much for all your comments and uh, we will see you next week. Yep, gotcha. Thank you. Okay, thanks.